Today's show is made possible by RexMD, the leader in men's online wellness. They're giving you the best they've ever offered, up to 95% off and a free gift. Go to RexMD.com slash chat. Tell you more about them later on in today's show. But if you want even more NFL draft videos, then spam me in the comment section. Let's show my bosses here at Chat Sports that this is the content you guys want. Spam your me's as we break down the latest Mel Kuyper updated NFL draft big board. No change at the top. It remains Caleb Williams at number one overall out of USC. I mean, I get it, right? You know, there, there are some things to be worried about for Caleb Williams. The just take the check down sometimes. There's moments it's like, like the, the Josh Allen I, I call it the, the bozo gene, but the out-of-structure stuff is, is uncoachable. It's unteachable. It does have the immense upside, but there is risk involved. That's why you are not allowed to make Patrick Mahomes comps. This is why you people are banned from it. Number two, Marvin Harrison. I'd actually put him at number one because he, he's, he's not the quarterback. The value is always going to be a little bit lower of the upside, but who here thinks he's going to be a number one wide receiver in the NFL? Like everyone, right? I think he's, he's awesome. Drake May at number three. Uh, I'm going to have to go back and clip the uh, first mock draft we did where I'm like, hey, guys, the Caleb Williams, Drake May, it's more of a 1A, 1B than people maybe want to admit. That's going on right now, especially if you look around other draft media outlets. He's a good player. Number four, Brock Bowers, tight end from Georgia. There's the positional value of how early can you really take a tight end, and it's uncertain for me. Uh, but you know, as a playmaker, as a weapon, a slot receiver maybe, there's plenty of value there. Number five, again, no changes yet from Mel's latest update of the big board, Shadur Sanders, who, again, I, I like Sanders a lot. I think he's a really good NFL or prospect. I was, I said he was a real player back when he was at, at the, uh, the previous, previous stop. I, I like what I've seen from Shadur. I also know Coach Prime has said, ah, his kids are going to come back to school for one more year. I buy that. I think it makes some sense. Can give him some real offensive line help, mate. Maybe and lead to better results overall. I do think ESPN is pushing this the Shador Sanders hype a little bit too far. I don't think he should be number five on your board. Fine to make him quarterback three. I don't think he should be number five. So in the end, will Sanders turn pro this year, or is his daddy telling the truth and he'll go back to college football? I think he is. Why for yes and for no? Head down to the comment section. It's the pin comment on today's video. If the ad comes here on YouTube, take advantage of it. Let me know why for yes and for no. Number six, Olu Fashanu. Uh, not the best effort against Ohio State. I got, got beat, basically, which hadn't really happened all year long. Immense upside as a franchise caliber left tackle. Roma Dunzie, number seven. Again, still no changes here. Uh, I love watching him play. Adunzie and Keon Coleman uh, at FSU is number eight on the Mel Kuyper big board. It's a tinge high for me. I don't know if they're really top 10 guys, but I'm talking like maybe they're 12 or something. These guys are awesome. Uh, bigger body receivers. Funny, last year's class had zero X receivers. There was nobody. You know, Jonathan Mingo got pushed in the early second round because of it. Done nothing in Carolina so far. Hope that changes for him. This year, you, 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 you got some X receivers. Those bigger body guys, Dunzier. You guys see that, see that contested while getting PI'd catch Keon Cole made against Miami? Oh, my God. He's so much fun to watch. Then there's LSU's Malik Neighbors, our first change. He was 12, now number 9 on Mel's updated big board. I don't love putting four receivers in the top 10. Feels just a little bit extreme, but the defensive class is not that good. That's why there's one player in the top 10 that plays defense, which we'll get to here in just a moment. But first, today's show is made possible by Rex MD. Fellas, do you sometimes lack some confidence in the bedroom? Do you wish you could have a more fulfilling sex life? You are not alone. That's why we are hyped to tell you guys about RexMD, the online source for men's wellness. RexMD offers an easy and discreet way to get the medication you need for ED without having to go to the doctor's office. With a few clicks, you can have your medication delivered straight to your door at a fraction of the cost of traditional pharmacies. RexMD's team of licensed physicians will work with you to find the right treatment plan and their medication is made in the USA, so you know you can trust its quality. Plus, their customer support team is available 24-7 to answer any questions or concerns you may have. If you are ready to take control of your sex life and say goodbye to ED, 
head on over to rexmd.com slash chat and start your consultation today. Take advantage of the best that they've ever offered. Up to 95% off RexMD and a free gift with our exclusive link. That's rexmd.com slash chat. Go to that link, rexmd.com slash chat, for this limited time deal. Starter packs of generic Viagra or Cialis are now available for our viewers to get started. That's rexmd.com slash chat. First defensive player, Cooper DeJohnick, that's how you pronounce it, out of Iowa. Uh, I'm a huge fan of his game. He can do, I think, any spot in the secondary and is a great uh, return man. He is a legitimate, legitimate first-round pick at corner. I have no complaints about him being CB1. There's another guy I love, too. We'll get to him in a little bit. Last time we did this video, and the last time Mel updated his rankings, he's done two update or another update in between the, the last or the last video and this one. Uh, we I put it out. Hey, Mel's missing. I think the best defensive player in the class, and that is Liatu Latu out of UCLA. Well, he's now gone from unranked to number eleven because I was right, and Mel should have had him on there. Glad to, glad to see him finally make an appearance in late November with two games left to go. Braverson game. Dallas Turner, number 12. He's not the biggest guy. I hate how Bama drops him into coverage, but he's very good when he actually gets to rush the DQB. I think Joe Alt at number 13, by the way, same spot for him, is a little bit low. I, I have been very impressed by his game. I would have him in my top 10, even ignoring the, the positional value of a franchise left tackle. He's a very, very good prospect. Who is your favorite player in the 2024 NFL Draft? Maybe it's Shadur Sanders. He's super fun to watch. Maybe it's Jaden Daniels, speaking of fun to watch, who's not on this list. But by the way, maybe we'll update Mel's top 10 quarterbacks at some point soon. Uh, he, does, he has Jaden Daniels at 7, which I think is probably about right there. Favorite player in the NFL Draft? Let me know in the comments section. One of Mel's favorites, who is now sliding back down, because some, I, I, my issue with Mel is that sometimes... You can, you can clearly tell what game he just scouted because that, the, the player who balls out tends to rise up in that, in that list. Uh, a couple of guys that stand out there. But Troy, Troy uh, Fontenot, I think he's going to be a guard, but a really good in the NFL. But again, I think 14 is, is rich for him. Kool-Aid McKinstry, elite name, going to be a great football player because how can you not be a good player with the name Kool-Aid? Teams don't throw at him at Alabama. They're looking at Terry on Arnold more than anything, and he's played very well, by the way. He could be a first-round pick, too. McKinstry, when teams don't throw at you, that means you're really good. He's number 15. Leonard Taylor, number 16, uh, was a very weird. He went from not ranked on Mel's board to, to ranked again at 15, now back down to 16. Some weird uh, jumping around there. Needs to show a little bit more consistency for me, but the upside is there, and I love gambling on upside three techniques. Now, if you want to stay up to date with all the latest NFL draft news, make sure you guys are subscribed. This video, of course, going up on our NFL draft channel and on the Chat Sports YouTube channel. A ton of draft coverage at both places. The NFL draft one will have some more team specific stuff, and the main channel, Chat Sports YouTube, uh, will have other NFL stuff as well. We're your one stop shop, folks. Hit that sub button right now. Another non-ranked player, player previously gets on the board, Tyler Guyton. A, a bit of an extreme jump up to 17, but I have no complaints about him being in the top 25. It's a good tackle class, folks. Amik Abuka down two spots, the other Ohio State wide receiver. I am excited to see that this OSU Michigan, it, Michigan has some good corners. How do they cover Harrison? And can Abuka, who's been a bit banged up, get going a little bit more? It's a good receiver class. You know, we're at number 18, and we are now up to the point where, in terms of the overall wide receiver rankings, we already have five players in there. How many receivers go in round one? Get those predictions in for me in the comments section. J.C. Latham, at number 19. If you want a right tackle, this is the guy that stands out to me. He's been very good for Alabama. Slid down one spot. So, too, did JT Tui Maloal, the defensive end pass rusher out of Ohio State. It's, it's kind of funny, by the way. If, you know, my, my, my claim has always been, if you just watched the Penn State games, you would think that JT Tui Maloal is one of the best prospects in all of college football. He had three sacks in his two games against Penn State. The problem is that outside of those games, 
he has four sacks or four and a half sacks. It just some inconsistencies on that front. But the pressures have been there. The upside has been there. Big game against Michigan. Fair or not, that's going to do a lot for his draft stock. I like seeing Nate Wiggins on here, number 21. Again, last time we broke down Mel's big board, he did not have Wiggins on there. Happy to see him be included. Landon Jackson also continues to slide down the board. Again, Mel was clearly watching the Alabama-Arkansas game and saw, oh my God, three and a half sacks in that one. He has not recorded a sack since that football game, and his other sacks come against BYU and Kent State. I, I, I think we're a little bit too high on Landon Jackson still, Mel. Drazon Newton out of Illinois. Not the biggest three technique, but I'm a sucker for undersized players as long as they produce. I like his game. No complaints about him being in the top 25. Jordan Morgan, good inclusion here out of Arizona. Again, it's a very good pass rushing class. And unfortunately, sliding down the wrong way more and more on the boards is Jared Verse. He is number 25. He had two sacks against Wake Forest and two sacks against Virginia Tech, but he only has four and a half sacks after he posted seven and a half last year and, and played plus, plus you know, a, a sack and a half in the, in, in the bowl game. It just has not been as impactful, as disruptive. But then again, FSU is undefeated, and he's still getting some good pressure rates. I think this is about the right spot for Verse, who I was hoping would have a, a bigger breakout year, but production-wise, simply has not. Who did Mel Kuyper leave off of his 2024 NFL Draft Big Board? Plenty of names you can mention, so please do so in the comments section. Some names I think he left off. He did drop Kalen King, and a big reason why was because of the poor play against Ohio State, and I get it. That's a very tough game. Uh, you also didn't get to glean much of, about him against Michigan because J.J. McCarthy is also not on this list. Uh, Michigan did not attempt to pass in the second half of that football game. But then again, when you're averaging five yards a carry, I get it. It's just kind of a funny game there. Love watching Troy Franklin play. He's explosive. I still think Amarius Mims needs to be in this conversation. I, I think he's too talented a, 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 as a pass rusher to, to or a tackle to not be on this list. I think he should be on there. Um, I do wonder... If we'll see some more of Chop Robinson, he's been banged up. He hasn't played that much this year. Uh, I, I think that's a, you know, a, a factor in, in why he hasn't you know, risen at all. But last time we saw him was against UMass. He had, he had three sacks in his last two games back when he was playing before he got nicked up, unfortunately. Uh, Denzel Burke, the Ohio State corner, I think is a good name. I also think the other corner I could have put on, on here if I wanted to as well. Uh, I think you could have put George's Kamari Lassiter on this list as well. Some names I think you should really consider. I, I, I still like McCarthy as my quarterback three, especially if Shadur Sanders does not go pro. But it's early in the draft process. More and more stuff is going to change, so not going to get too up over my skis from that perspective.